I've gotten a lot of requests to do a video on the tactic skills, and while I wanted to wait until all their variants have come out, I figured now would be a better time to talk about them because everyone has the opportunity to get a free legendary Ike and he comes with defense tactic. So at the time this video is being uploaded, speed tactic is not yet in the game, however I am sure it will be incorporated eventually and everything I talk about here should apply the same. Let's get started. So there is a tactic skill for each stat and each version will buff their respective stat. The description reads, at start of turn, grants either attack, speed, defense, or resistance plus 6 to allies within 2 spaces for 1 turn. Granted only if the number of that allies movement type on the current team is less than or equal to 2. So the tactic skills work very similarly to the normal hone or fortify buffs but they have a very odd condition to be activated. A lot of people get confused on the last sentence and to make it clear, movement type is simply unit type. It has nothing to do with how many spaces a unit can move. Movement type refers to the four types of units and each of them have their own movement properties. So knowing this, you simply have to make sure that you don't have three or more of the same type of unit on your team or the tactic skill will not proc for them. If you're still confused, hopefully this slide can help you out. In each image, Legendary Ike is equipped with defense tactic. On the left we have Ike and Soren who are both infantry units, Titania who is a cavalier, and the Black Knight who is an army unit. Soren gets the buff because the number of infantry allies is two being Ike and himself. Titania gets the buff because she is the only cavalier unit and the same goes for the Black Knight being the only army unit. So in this situation, Legendary Ike grants everyone the defense tactic buff. In the middle image we subbed out the Black Knight for Nephany and she is another infantry unit. This brings the total number of infantry units up to 3 which means Ike cannot pass on the defense tactic buff to Soren or Nephany. Since Titania is still the only cavalry unit she can get the buff. The check for defense tactic is for each individual unit, hence you can have situations where only one member receives the buff. Last we sub out Titania for yet another infantry unit in Micaiah and this brings our total infantry count up to 4. Since Soren, Nephany, and Micaiah are all infantry units, none of them will receive the defense tactic buff and it becomes a completely useless skill for the battle. So choosing your team is very important for the tactic skills. You can go with 1 infantry, 1 cavalier, 1 flyer, and 1 armor and your tactic skill user will grant everyone the buff. You can also go 2 infantry and 2 flyers, or 2 cavalry and 2 armors, and everyone will be eligible for a tactic buff. As long as you don't have 3 or more of the same unit type, you should be good to go for the best buffing setups. So now I'm just showing you guys the range activation difference between a standard hone or fortify buff and the tactic buffs. You can see that 2 spaces is so much more room to work with and as long as you follow the rule of no more than 2 of the same unit types, Everyone on the team in that 2 space range is eligible for the buff. If you have the right team, you cannot argue that the tactic skills are much easier to buff your team. If you want to know if tactic skills are better than the other buffing methods, here's a small comparison. We will compare attack tactic, hone attack, and the class buff hone cavalry. In terms of strength, attack tactic grants 2 more attack than hone attack, but gets outclassed by hone cavalry since it grants plus 6 to 2 different stats. In terms of range, Hone Attack and Hone Cavalry require your units to be adjacent to each other, while Attack Tactic has that huge 2 space range. This is one of its biggest advantages to me. Last, you have your team options and as we discussed you need to run a mixed team with different unit types to get the best mileage out of the tactic skills. The class buffs are all very powerful but they only work for one single class type, so if you want to buff the whole team you need to run an emblem team of some sorts. As for the simple Hone Attack skill it can work for anyone. No need to worry about team composition and you can rely on these skills to work no matter who you use. It may not be the most powerful, but that simple reliability is nice to have. So I'm no expert on the usage of tactic skills, but here are some ideas for skills that could work well with them. Hinaka's new spear upgraded allows her infantry and flyer allies to move next to her from within two spaces, so she can buff her team with a tactic skill and let them move next to her to attack. Mart's falchion upgrade grants plus to all stats to his allies within two spaces and remember that this drive type of effect can stack with normal buffs. Give Marth a tactic skill and he can grant a huge plus 6 buff to one stat and also provide an additional plus 2 to all stats. He could make a very cool wide range buffer. Next, skills like Guidance which is similar to Hinaka's Spear but allows armors to get some extra mobility. Guidance promotes mixed team usage so it can work well with tactic skills. Of course there are all kinds of different buffing type of skills you can stack on top. While Tactic and Hone and Fortifies won't stack on the same stat, that doesn't stop you from using Attack Tactic and Hone Speed as a Sacred Seal. 
Similarly, we are getting more and more spur and drive type sacred seals, so that just means more stats that can stack since they are invisible buffs. If the tactic skills become sacred seals, you could have a really potent buff for unit provided you have your team set up correctly. To end this video, I'll share some personal thoughts about the tactic skills. So first off, these are great for arena defense teams. You know the AI may not be the smartest at positioning, so why not help it out by having an increased range on your buffing effects. You control what your arena team is, so you can easily make sure you fulfill the right conditions so everyone can share on that sweet plus 6 buff. On the flip side, the tactic skills drop in reliability in the game modes that require on the fly team crafting. This is modes like Arena Assault or Squad Assault where you may not always be able to fulfill the two or less same type of unit condition. Let's say you want to use Legendary Ike in that 7th Arena Assault battle, but you end up drafting two other infantry units. Now defense tactic won't work for them and instead a simple fortified defense buff would have. The same can be said for the class buffs of course. Last, this is not really an issue with the tactic skills themselves, but they are still a bit too rare to get for easy team customization. The hone and fortify skills are all super available to get from low star units and most players will have had a long time to rack up fodder units with these skills available at max rank at 4 stars. Maybe another year, tactic skills will be more common, but for now they are still a bit hard to get compared to other buffing skills. That's pretty much all I have to say on the tactic skills. I have the most experience with defense tactic on Legendary Ike himself and when you can buff up your team's defense by plus 6, that is really helpful. I would say these vastly overpowered the Hone and Fortify skills, but only if you can create a team beforehand. Seriously, once speed tactic is introduced, it will be a very high demand skill. Keep in mind, the tactic skills are one of the only ways to get plus 6 buffs to infantry units. This can be key for blade tail infantry mages who just couldn't keep up with the double plus 6 buffs on flyer, cavalry, and armor emblem teams. Overall, I think mixed teams are very interesting and the game has been promoting their usage since introducing skills like guidance. Sure, emblem class buffs are really good, but not everyone wants to run them all the time. The tactic skills are a way these mixed teams can gain a little more power. Tell me what you think about the tactic skills in the comments, and I hope this video helped you guys understand how they work. Subscribe for more Fire Emblem Heroes content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.